welcome to day two of IoT Design Week. My name is Rachel Bedore, and I'm here in the studio with Bob Martin, our Wizard of Make, for Maker Day. And Bob will be giving a demo of his IoT weather station. It's super cool. So hang tight for that, because we're going to announce the winners of our Arduino Uno Wi-Fi Rev 2 giveaway. Um, also, uh, Adafruit has generously uh, decided to tack on a giveaway of five Pi portals. So if you're interested in winning that, just comment in the YouTube chat and you'll be entered to win. Um, and we will announce those winners at the very end. But right now, let's get to the winners of the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi Rev 2. Okay. Well, we've got the slides up. There we go. And they are Austin Bailey, Anand Pandit, Michelle Fararizi, Ravi Carr, and Prem Kumar. So if you guys could just send an email to livestream at microchip.com, uh, we'll get you set up to send you your prize. So congratulations to them. If you didn't win and you're still interested, we will give away one more on Friday. Uh, so definitely uh, tune back in on Friday. We'll give, we'll give out another uh, Arduino Wi-Fi Rev 2. So you still have a chance, and you definitely have a chance to win a Pi Portal. So. Uh, keep commenting, and you'll be entered to win. We'll announce that at the end. Indeed. Congratulations, uh, everyone. So let's drop away from that, and we'll get rid of that. Now, all right. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us on day two. As uh, Rachel mentioned, it is Maker Day today. And the projects I put together are all weather station based, and um, we'll be uh, sending out a link for my GitHub repository where all the uh, goodness of information is for this. So I'm going to start what's going to be on your left, which is the, uh, the base station with, with, the, with the carefully crafted, handcrafted wooden uh, support system. On top is an anemometer uh, system and a wind, uh, wind direction, wind vane system that you can get from SparkFun, Argent Data Systems, again, uh, in, in my GitHub, I'll have the complete parts list for everything. The two boards up on <coughs> the this weather station version one is uh, over here is actually the Arduino Wi-Fi Rev 2, and that's the latest uh, Arduino board that's been released, or one of the latest ones, which is what uh, those uh, lucky winners won. It is based on our new Mega 4809 AVR which has enhanced peripherals. It, it, it's a step up from the venerable 328P, which you know all the Unos and all the 8-bitters are based on. It also has uh, a Wi-Fi module. Um, there's an accelerometer module on there and our, a crypto secure element, which is going to come into play actually uh, later on on another thing uh, on, on the middle design. This board here, the purple board is a custom design. It's my PCB board design. Again, the Altium design database is going to be on, on my GitHub. Uh, sorry, I didn't. I don't do. You know, I don't do Eagle, but it's the way it is. But um, I'm also going to push that up into uh, Circuit Maker, which is the free version of Altium Designer. So I'm not um, excluding anybody that doesn't have an Altium Designer license. The board itself is essentially a carrier board for an Arduino Pro Mini, which is one of my favorite Arduino boards for projects like this. It's small and expensive. It's available from uh, SparkFun in three or five volt options. It also, um, this carrier board also has a BME280 based weather click for Microelectronica. That's the green board. Uh, Microchip and Microelectronica have a very close partnership. Uh, Microelectronica has over a hundred boards. Uh, using microchip technology. And the, the smaller board here, um, the blue board, is um, a board from my good friends at Adafruit, their VML6075 UV sensor. So between those two boards, I have the ability to measure temperature, pressure, um, relative humidity, and, and a UV index, uh, which, which is outstanding between two boards. The anemometer system is actually being fed into the middle board right now, but it's because it's the same board. 
and I just don't want to mess connections up right now. But this, this system right now is currently publishing to the Weather Underground. And I'm not going to go into all the mechanics of the Weather Underground, but um, what I'm going to do is, if you can pull up my screen now, what I'm, what I'm displaying here is, <coughs> um, unfortunately for the Weather Channel, the Weather Underground, uh, it thinks this weather station is in Sunnyvale, California. This is a weather station I registered personally, uh, KCA Sunny 216. And these are the current conditions. I'm doing HTTP GET requests from the UNO Wi-Fi um, Rev2, and everything is, is, is publishing up. So that's great. Um, again, the Weather Underground, a wonderful uh, network. It was in the cloud before the cloud was actually a thing. Um, and I'm publishing quite nicely to, the, to that cloud. The reason I'm using two boards, and this is important for me anyway, is you know, people, you know, you're out there going, well, why didn't you just hook all the sensors up to the Uno Wi Fi Rev 2? Why? You've got two platforms, or you've got two Arduinos there, right? The reason I did this, and it becomes more obvious, well, even as I'm moving to the middle board, is the data that's being collected by the carrier board is all sensor fused in, in aspect and correlated on, and pushed into a serial packet that's human readable. And I'm going um, to... Hey, Bob, up. I yes. have a question. Yes? So for, uh, when you made your own PCB, yes. if I was a maker that had never done that before, can you go through a little bit of what that process would look like? Um, certainly. Um, I can't... So the initial one, um, <coughs> you, you know, people start with a package. You start with a schematic diagram, uh -huh. right? And um, luckily, all all the boards here, like the um, the Pro Mini and the uh, sensor board from Adafruit and Microelectronic, all supply their own schematics, which allows me to quickly tell which signals I, I have to hook up, right. and then you go from the schematic entry into um, the actual PCB layout, okay? Okay. Um, I think that, um, uh, I think people, it, it's, it's a two-step process, and people that have done this know how to do this, yeah. right? Um, and, um, but you, you I, I'm gonna pin, I'm gonna pin my previous discussion up and, and continue on. One of the hardest things I had to do here was not um, get the software together. The software, um, fell together really quickly because of the excellent support from SparkFun and Adafruit and uh, the open source community, which I've attributed, I've credited in my, in my software um, because I've, I've leaned heavily on a lot of other mm -hmm. people's work. The toughest thing I had to deal with, and for those of you who are dealing with I squared C sensors, is some I squared C sensors um, like five volts, most of them like 3.3. So. Most of my effort in this design is pushing 3.3 volts up to five or taking five volts down to three, 3.3. Um, that's where I spent most of my time in this design, ironically. Um, and I, I need to thank Adafruit personally for putting a 3.3 volt regulator on that 6075 EV sensor because it uh, allowed me to get away with not dropping one on, on the carrier board, okay? Uh -huh. So, standardized serial stream. Let's go to the serial stream we're looking at right now. Um, if we cut to my, my screen, um, that's impossible to read. So let me, there, okay. So what I wanted to do was come up with a standard serial stream that's coming off of the sensor fusion board that allows me to, and it literally looks like this in the partition between the pole of the anemometer, is the wires going from my, sen my sensor fusion board to the UNO Wi-Fi Rev 2. That's just 38,400 uh, 38, um, baud serial. And if you, look at my, if you look at the screen, this string that starts with the at 
sign is the standard serial stream, which is human readable, which means I can debug my sensor board without having my communications board online. So you're not fighting two problems at the same time, okay? You don't want to do that. It also allowed me, if we're moving on, so this is, you know, you can see it's scan number, temperature, uh, humidity, pressure, wind velocity, we're, we're trying to get a fan to blow the thing around, but wind velocity is, it's, it's dead calm in here. Um, as you can tell, my hair is not moving, well, it doesn't move <laughs> at, at all, uh, and Rachel's hair is completely and nicely in place. Um, and the direction is just what happened with the, with the wind vane as it settled down. But you can get, and this, again, this serial protocol is extensible for those of you who are going to go out. Yeah. Um, and this sensor thing is completely extensible. I'm going to just really um, make that big so everybody can see that. Again, um, you can extract this, the, the data is easily extractable. I'm, you know, I'm on scan 604 right now. Um, and again, about every five seconds I publish that. Okay, so that was my intent. You, you can look at the design and easily integrate it into one board. But I will give you a, a bit of warning or a bit of guidance um, since I have quite a bit of experience in environmental monitoring from my previous career that you really don't want to have RF systems near sensor decks. And typically this sensor deck really needs to be up, you know, by the anemometer. The UV sensor needs to be, you know, covered in glass and be careful of the glass because certain glasses filter the UV. So your UV <laughs> index is going to be um, false, zero. Um, I'm glad it's like at 0 0.01 in here, to be honest, because I didn't bring any sunscreen. <laughs> and um, things like the temperature and the pressure sensor have to be, you know, in a, in a shield, but there's lots of details I don't need to get into um, on, on setting, properly setting up a weather station. So this serial partition allowed me to take the UNO Wi-Fi Rev 2, and then I moved over. To, the middle board is essentially the exact same sensor deck that I came. The purple board is my sensor carrier board with the two sensors. But then I moved over to using a Maker 1000 because Arduino had, has just announced or, you know, just recently their Arduino IoT cloud. So, you know, everybody's, you know, in the cloud right now. And I was impressed um, on how easily it was to, all I had to do was lift the um, packet parsing code from my previous design and drop it into the Maker 1000, the Arduino cloud infrastructure did everything else for me, mm -hmm. practically. Um, so if, if we cut to my uh, screen right now, you'll see the dashboard that uh, I, would, I created in the Arduino cloud. Now, the uh, beta version of the Arduino cloud right now only <laughs> lets me push up five uh, properties. So unfortunately, the UV index isn't there. That's neither that that'll be all taken care of by you know Arduino as it comes out of beta and whatever. So that's neither here nor there. But I was able to put this dashboard together very quickly. And the cool thing about the Arduino IoT Cloud is I'm on this you know you know widgets view the widgets kind of thing. If I move over to this other other screen, these are the properties I've defined a weather station one. And on top of, remember when I said, when I kind of pinned back a little bit on the security, that secure element that's both on the UNO Wi-Fi Rev 2 and on the Maker 1000, um, what that allows us to do is generate a set of public and private keys between that particular Maker 1000 and my weather station one, okay? So this board is the only board that's allowed to publish to my Weather Station 1. I can add other um, devices to my Arduino Cloud, but he's the only guy that gets to publish mm, to this okay. thing, right? And tomorrow, day three, we're going to have our security experts here talk about that process a lot more. And it's really important, okay? It's like getting your credit card hijacked is one thing. You phone the credit card company and say, eh, give me another card, right? Hacking your house is a completely different thing, right? right? You right. don't 
having people turn off your kitchen lights is, is a completely weird personal thing, right? That's what internet IoT security is going to be all about, right? The other, again, so I just added, I can add another property, which I can't because I'm limited out. But what I wanted to show you, what I was really impressed with, is this edit code thing where it's going to take the list of properties. Um, it's, I've got the Arduino Create plugin loaded right now. You don't have to have the Arduino Create, Create plugin loaded, but it will just give you a little warning. But essentially, it auto-generates all of the, uh, the code for you. And the important thing is this thing's property.h in that it, it automatically generates this um, init properties function, which loads in all your property names into a method. And then that's just called under their cloud uh, object. So getting the, um, everything published is really straightforward. I'm not going to go line by line through this, uh, through this code. But, you know, it's a begin, it's a begin statement, and it's a, you know, you know, Arduino cloud update, and you're just, like, updating the variables in the background. So, again, a really effortless way to get data published to the cloud, okay? And now I just remembered something else that's kind of important. So, the code on the Maker 1000 is completely Arduino sketch. The code that's running in the Arduino Pro Mini right now is I imported the sketch into Atmel Studio and created a formal C++ project, not to just be annoying to everybody out there that don't have Atmel Studio, but I used it to tune up some interrupt routines to make the wind speed measurement more effective, more, it's not what's called thread blocking, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you, you should be able to move that back into a sketch. I'm going to do that later on um, because there's nothing that's not, that's Atmel Studio specific. But for those of you who have Atmel Studio and one of our debug tools, I also brought out the ISP connector and which also brings out debug wire. So you can do all those wonderful uh, source level debugging things that you, you can do in a professional IDE. All right. So at the end of the day, um, I'm going to go back there and just pick up the pick up the cloud and again though you know these this is the the properties that I just defined um, you know update every five seconds and this is essentially the conditions in our studio right now um, you know the humidity is pretty high it rained here in Arizona um, it's rare it's rare yeah it I very woke rarely up there. rains I, I live in California so I went from rain to more rain so I'm not happy about that but <laughs> um, okay, so so that's one, two. Let's talk about the the board on the on your right, which is a, a another magnificently handcrafted piece of piece of birch plywood um, with a pie portal, which is what we're giving away. That's yeah. what we're giving away. And um, I don't know if Lamore or Philip are on watching this live stream, but they're wondering what the heck did he do to our poor pie portal? Hey, with hey those Bob. Yes. We um, actually have some super awesome questions that I want to make sure that we honor. Um, okay. Just before you get to your last section. Okay. So why don't uh, we've got some questions coming up? So why don't we take some questions uh, before I hop over to the pie portal? So. Yeah. So the first question is. Um, so I guess this is a pretty simple one, but can a range gate be added to the setup? Maybe it's not that simple. I don't know. A range Ab gate. Absolutely. Excellent question. Um, the hardware design of that purple carrier board, I brought out all of the unused I I.O., all of the unused digital and analog pins onto, uh, it's, it's tough to see, but there's a um, connector over here. Um, I, yeah, I can't reach. So right about... <laughs> yeah, here. Trust me. Um, on this board, right along this side, all of the unused I.O., all the digital pins and all the other analog pins are brought out to a point when it's header. Okay? I'm not leaving any I.O. Um, unused on that Arduino Pro Mini, so absolutely a range gauge is trivial to add to this design. 
Awesome. And then this is a really good question as well. Um, is setting up the Arduino cloud similar to Google IoT cloud? So maybe you could speak to the similarities and differences. Um, for the guy, for the fans out there watching right now, we are going to um, talk about this in more detail throughout the course of the week. But Bob, if you could kind of give us maybe a high level preview to that, <coughs> that'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I would say it's it's similar. They both have mm -hmm. the differences are just how that mechanism or how that front end GUI works, so how you interact and how you add properties. Um, I haven't gone through all the, the steps of setting up the Google Cloud, but I've seen enough of it that it, it is indeed similar in that there's always some basic steps that you follow. One is, um, you know, in our AVRT board that we gave away yesterday, is matching or pairing um, that board to some type of imp implementation and then defining an implementation and then adding properties to that implementation. Um, it's right. and so and, and that's where this whole security thing comes in you want to make sure that um, it's not which is something that took you know my head to get around a little bit you're not only matching the device um, you're matching a device to an implementation um, because I have weather station if I go back to um, my cloud if I go back right to my cloud, uh, my edit. Yeah, that screen, yeah. Uh, to me, looked a lot like Google Clouds. Uh, yeah, so. Like the pub sub menu where you're determining your functions. Right. Um, it reminded me a lot of that. So, so I, I think Google Cloud is, um, I, I haven't played around with Arduino Cloud at all, but Google Cloud is definitely, they're big on scale, so they, you know, it's, it's meant to manage a lot of different devices. Which right. So I would say uh, the differences are just going to be in the way the web pages are presented, but the concepts are the same. Right. Okay. So I, 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 I hope that was, was enough of an answer. It's, unless I had brought them up side by side, which I'm not kind of <laughs> yeah. prepared to do right now. S sorry, but yes, it's similar enough. <laughs> awesome. Me. Thanks, Bob. Yep. Um, also, Adafruit uh, made a great point as well. So you've got the Google IoT Cloud, you've got the Arduino uh, Cloud, which I'm assuming is, is fit up, set up well to work with Arduino. Um, Adafruit.io also has a cloud option as well. So just wanted to give, they mentioned that in the comments. Abs absolutely. It wasn't, it wasn't a personal slight on Adafruit. I, I again thank Lamore and Philip for getting me a Pi Portal. Um, uh, what I wanted to do is uh, concentrate on, and this project is going to continue, and what I want to do is integrate the Pi Portal as not only a local display option for the weather station, but also publish it up to their cloud as well. Awesome. Um, it, it, it was just, I, I was just running out of time and space <laughs> last week, <laughs> absolutely, unfortunately. Absolutely. So. Um, and then one last question that I'll grab real fast, and for those of you who hear this talking head but don't actually know who I am, my name is Matt Dickens, and Wayne and I are back here in the booth. Uh, yeah, kind we'll, of we'll flash ourselves on the camera for for like one second. Yeah, we're, we're not the we're not the stars we're of the show by any officially. means. <laughs> but um, uh, one of the users just made a great comment. Um, I apologize, I'm not great at names, so I won't try to pronounce it. But How's the whole secure authentication done with the secure element? Are these documents or videos to help out with this when you're just starting up? That is a super awesome segue for tomorrow's live stream. That is. And so tomorrow, we, as Bob mentioned, we actually have our two really great guys from our security group that are going to come in. And for an hour, that's all they're going to talk about. What is a secure element? What do I need to worry <coughs> about when I'm doing security? I personally know very little or knew very little about security when I started talking with these guys but they have just really opened my mind to what it means to be a secure element. Why would I care? What are the big factors right. to take into mind? And they'll talk to things like getting started and stuff like that. So if you have any questions at all about security or you wanna know more about what Bob's been talking about today, definitely make sure you come and come back to us tomorrow at 9 a.m. again for a full length discussion on security. Right, and um, again, I'm not gonna you know repeat what they're gonna say tomorrow because they're the experts, but the basic concept of these secure elements is when Adafruit or SparkFun or Arduino buy this secure element from us, they burn in, permanently implant what's called a root certificate. 
and that certificate never comes out. You can't get that out of that part, okay? And then from that, you can generate, um, uh, for those of you on the internet who are familiar with PGP or public private key encryption, mm -hmm. that's what happens is they use that root certificate to generate a pair of keys, the private key and the public key, and much like PGP, you can throw that public key out in the air and use that to create the hash, and that is how you create that one-to-one -one, uh, relationship with that particular device, and you can't replicate it. That's mm -hmm. the whole important part of this. So please, yeah, if, if you've got more questions, um, please do tune in tomorrow. Um, these, these guys are the experts, and we've put a lot of really good effort into making this as effortless as possible, including Arduino and, and our other vendors in making that encryption technology as black box-like as possible, okay? So, um, anything else from, the, from our studio audience? And then I'm just gonna cover the Pi portal. Yeah, Bob, bit. go ahead and take us home. Or to cover Perfect. the next section. <laughs> okay, so again, uh, many thanks to uh, Lamore and Philip for getting that Pi portal out to me. Um, and I ended up not having the right JST connector, so um, a steady hand and a Dremel tool ended up removing the JST connector, and I ended up using some hot glue and some direct wires to uh, create that kind of uh, dumpster fire wiring mess to that other BME 280 weather station. Now. The Pi portal is, um, again, based on our SAM D51, um, 120 meg Cortex M4F based uh, part, um, one of my favorite ARM parts right now. And it's, again, talking to um, a, a weather click. Um, again, Adafruit has a BME280, and I give full creds because all the support I'm using, all the BME280 support comes from the Adafruit libraries. So, um, if you have a sensor board, and I'm flat out um, saying this for both SparkFun and Adafruit, if you have a sensor, these are the two places that you need to go look for uh, Arduino libraries or now um, CircuitPython libraries for Adafruit. I, I, it's just scrolling a B, some BME 280 raw data on the screen right now, but I'm not a Python programmer, but I, I'm learning. I'm learning, um, in all fairness to Lamore. <laughs> um, but again, not being a Python programmer and fighting 30 years of C programming paradigm, I was able to get that BME 280 up in a few minutes, which is very impressive. So uh, there is um, there are some really cool projects on the Pi portal. Um, there's some pushing up to the cloud. Um, I'm looking forward to working with Adafruit on getting some really cool what we call gauges and like fancy displays on that Pi portal in Python where you can just, all the, again, all the heavy liftings done for you in integrating the sensor deck and having the Pi portal um, in my living room um, displaying the local data or, or the local weather you know, sensor data and then also publishing it up to the cloud and also publishing it up to Weather Underground, okay? Yeah, Adafruit showed us some of their really yeah. cool tutorials with Pi Portal. Um, so, definitely recommend checking them out. So we're very fun. So it's I'm I'm tying in a lot of the um, maker ecosystem together, right? I've got Spark Funds involved here, Adafruit, Arduino, um, uh, Microelectronica, of course. So again, my intent was, well to put together an Arduino powered weather station. But that's been done before. But to make it modular, to make it expandable, and, and especially with that partitioning, because the next step is the middle board, I'm gonna be able to take a Maker 1300 LoRa and drop a LoRa node onto that middle board and bring up that, the LoRa software and hopefully within a day I'm gonna have that, this whole system on a LoRa board mm -hmm. on a LoRa module in MKR 1300 and I'm not going to have to change any any hardware right it's just all software so to me that's a modular design I'm also going to be updating the um, hardware design um, to allow more microelectronica and more Adafruit and more SparkFun sensors just to be plugged in here um, and again you know it, it, it's going to grow to a point 
but um, you know, have a look at my GitHub repository. Um, I, I, you know, again, it's open. I'm, I'm the wizard of make, right? <laughs> Please, uh, the only thing I'm begging you is, um, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get lots of pull requests onto my GitHub repo. Don't be offended if I don't accept your pull request because I may get like a 200 pull requests. I, I don't need to spend a week doing all the merging, okay? Not that I don't appreciate your, uh, your contributions, um, but you can email, we have an email address, you can get a hold of me you know, indirectly if you got like, Bob, you're an idiot, do it this way. Fine, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll listen to all and any advice. Um, the one help I am looking for, I will truly be honest with you right now, is um, some of the, on the Weather Underground, to get the response back that I have confirmation of, publish, of, of publication, they're supposed to send a response back. I can't, I can't seem to get that. Um, but if you look at my code, maybe it's obvious to somebody, right? Um, that's my primary concern, you know, add the rain gauge. Um, give me, you know, it's like I'm, I'm adopting to the uh, philosophy of the open source community, update often, update early. So the GitHub repo, of course, is not complete, but I'm going to be pushing a lot of stuff up over the next week, so please bear with me. Um, and I think, uh, do we have any other questions coming in right now? Hey Bob. Yeah. Um, we don't really have any more okay. questions per se, but just a quick, um, just a quick plug for the live streams moving forward. Um, if you guys really enjoyed this material, um, our live streams, we are all over the place. Sometimes we'll talk about new development boards that are coming out. Sometimes we'll talk about new tools that have come out. Sometimes we just talk about ideas like what does it mean to take an analog signal and put it into the digital world or vice versa. How do we take a digital signal and put it into the analog world. Um, and so if you guys liked what you heard, guys and girls liked what you heard today, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and you can either do that through the great content that we're putting out through IoT Week specifically, or you can even just jump on to our different social platforms, whether that be Instagram, I believe that's like at Microchip Makes, or is it Microchip Technology? <laughs> it's Microchip Makes. It's Microchip right, Makes. That's what I thought. And then we've got, Thank our, you, Rachel. we've got our YouTube channel, Microchip Technology, Facebook, Microchip Technology. So we're always putting out great content on those platforms, um, and this live streams are one of the great ways to do that. So make sure that if you haven't already, you feel free and subscribe today. Wow, Perfect. very succinct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so again, I just want to, um, you know, a shout out to, again, Arduino um, for the Wi-Fi Rev 2. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, um, it's, it's a really great product. It's, it's a really good step up from the Uno because you now have the, ease of 8-bit programming now with Wi-Fi connectivity and as we're working with Arduino, you know, I, I work with Arduino quite a bit, um, well almost all the time, to help take advantage of some of the uh, enhanced peripherals, like the A to D converter on there has got some cool tricks on it. And you know, uh, again, the, the, the MKR format, um, and again, thank you to Adafruit for that outstanding support and to Arduino again for putting together for a guy who's grown up on embedded C programming the ability to put together a, a web page or a, even a dashboard is is cool to me um, and then and uh, the Pi portal uh, have a look at that as well again we're we're gonna they're having Adafruit's got the giveaway set up so yeah definitely. Um, Thanks for tuning in, um, and this this project is going to continue to grow. I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to expand the sensor deck, and I'm also going to, um, like I said, move to Laura for more specific. Here's a here's a weather station design that's good for a home. Here's a weather station design that's good for dropping out in a remote area. Um, I went through a lot of bad air quality in California <laughs> earlier, right? So things like that. So. Well, thanks, Bob. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with Laura. I think that'll yep. be really cool. We've been, uh, I've been reading a lot about uh, so, Laura's applications mm -hmm. and environmental monitoring. It's, it's a super, it's definitely the future. So. It is, yeah. That's, uh, that's how I, that's why one of my first jobs was environmental monitoring, so. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. Um, so we would be remiss if we did not 
uh, do the giveaways for the hour. And for some of you that saw that little blip, we actually pulled those up. We're having a little bit of fun getting PowerPoint to work here in the back. Okay. Technical but difficulties here. So we're <laughs> just going to have to read the names, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you guys have watched our live streams at all, you'll know that I'm sometimes not the best with names. So I apologize if I mispronounce something ahead of time. But our five winners for t today are Barry Chiarello. You've had some great questions, and uh, the random number generator picked you, so good work. Um, we have Daniel Brugman, Rick Hubbard, The Lonely Programmer, and Mr. Certainly. And to claim that Pi Portal, just make sure you send us an email at livestream at microchip.com, and we'll go ahead and grab your information and send that over to Adafruit and make sure that you get those Pi Portals. So once again, that was Barry Chiarello, Daniel Brugman, Rick Hubbard, The Lonely Programmer, and Mr. Certainly. So thank you. And thank you for everyone else who has been commenting. This has been a lot of questions, a lot of just participation. We appreciate that a lot. Make sure that you mm -hmm. tune back in each day for new prizes. And then like Rachel said at the end, um, we have some more Arduino Rev 2 boards and we got some more IoT boards. Okay, now we got it to work so you can switch over. So All right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over one more time so that we can see those winners there. So there's your names in case I mispronounce something and go ahead email livestream at microchip.com to get your Pi Portal today. And so. a special shout out to the Lonely Programmer. Yes. Yeah, he has an awesome tutorial on Hackster.io about the AVRIO TWG board, which okay. we gave away yesterday. Um, so definitely check out his channel. And uh, one more thing, um, there is a really cool, I believe it's on Thingy Universe, a really cool 3D printer stand design for the Pi Portal. Um, I just didn't have time to throw off a print. Uh, before I had to catch my flight to Arizona, but it's out there. Great. So I All think right. that's a wrap. Are we um, if you guys have further questions, feel free to email that livestream at microchip.com um, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Um, and then again, make sure you tune in tomorrow. We'll have full length. Um, so if you've been tuning into our live streams in the past, tomorrow's live stream will be a lot more similar to what we traditionally do, which is like an hour session with Q&A um, with experts. It should be It'll be really fun. Um, I'm definitely, it'll be very informative and I think we'll all learn a lot about IoT security. So I'm looking forward to that. That's tomorrow at 9 a.m. And we will also have a giveaway and still be doing IoT Design Week, but we'll have this full live stream as well. Um, so I think that's it and uh, see you tomorrow. Oh yes, well, thank you, Rachel. All right, so goodbye to all of you. I hope you uh, enjoyed the, the show, so to speak, and uh, go up to my GitHub and you know, go see what I did. All right.